Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today. And we're in Los Angeles today, and we are going in the world of film and TV and so forth with John Griffiths from Gallica, the Society of LGBTQ Entertainment Critics uh, Association and the Dorian Awards. But how are you, John? I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for having me, as they say. <laughs> Absolutely. That was a mouthful. I had, you know, because I, I had Gallica, you know, and I understand what that was so far. But then I was like, wait a second, we're going to put the Dorian Awards in there, too, in that in that sentence. So uh, we're going to make sure we right. cover it all. Yeah, yeah. We're everything. <laughs> you are. But I find it really unique what, what you have put together. And um, um, especially if you're on social media and you're interested in film in any way, shape or form, LGBT films specifically, I think you have to be living under a rock to not see the content and the the work you all are doing because it's amazing that especially when you, the awards come out every year that you guys are just everywhere well your lips have got ears uh, thanks matt for you know uh thanks for caring enough to do <laughs> this uh, and and you know help people learn more about gallica and our dorian awards uh, yeah uh yeah you know uh to be frank um you know, we've been uh, for a, a group that's been around 15 years and uh, has over 500 members in the U.S. and uh, England, Canada, Australia and beyond, uh, including countries like, the, you know, the Philippines, Mexico, uh, Brazil. Uh, oh, God, you know, uh, Guyana. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it's it's wonderful and it's amazing. And the, the kids, uh, I can say kids cause I'm 60 now, uh, God help me. And, uh, the, the, the young emerging journalists or even established, uh, at a pretty, you know, pretty quickly, um, working and critiquing movies or TV shows or Broadway for, um, for, you know, really well-known outlets, yeah, uh, yeah. They look up to our our older members and and the organization is like wow I'm so honored to be in this group, but that's wonderful in within our organization, but it's we're still uh, maybe because we're queer, yeah. trans uh, 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 journalists we're still uh, placed in you know considered sort of a niche in Hollywood and uh, the general mainstream media. And I'll shut up uh, and let you ask another question. But no, I just, no. I did no, want to just... say our awards go to, our, the Dorian Awards go to uh, mainstream as well as uh, LGBTQIA uh, titles and, you know, content yeah. and performances and stuff. So we're the queer eye on movies, TV, and Broadway, et cetera. Well, that, that's just it. But I think, I think the, one of the, the elements of your magic it's just that you know out of those 500 members um you know you're bringing together all these journalists that come across from television film broadway uh, you know in all those regions that you're talking about and i think it's that bringing together journalists and also journalists that some of them are more old school but when you merge them with kind of the social media and the technologies of today there's a bunch of you that are just really good at kind of bridging those two worlds and that's i think part of the magic is that you're out there and you're um you're, t you're publishing and putting things out about some of the Dorian Awards and different things you're doing, but you're also amplifying the voices of so many other um, writers and so forth that are out there that have been doing this for maybe decades. And I yeah, think that's a big part of it. It's super, it's very important uh, for us. You know, I, I started this uh, group as it, it sort of felt clubby uh, initially 15 years ago. It was about, I woke up one morning and I thought, um, you know, I, it's it, uh, gay critics, and that was my mindset at the time. Yeah. You know, really, that they love movies and TV, and they're so passionate about it. You know, what is that? Why is that? You know, why is there such a distinct uh, that queer eye that I didn't, yeah. I wasn't thinking of? But that's what it. I mean, that phrase. But it, it was. It's that sort of maybe born of oppression or, uh, yeah. you know, fear. Um, that translates into, you know, an attraction to, you know, dark humor, campy humor, tragic humor, uh, melodrama. Um, and beyond that, we just get lost as, you know, feeling, you know, shunted by society in some ways. Uh, we, you know, I know I did. I, I turned the TV to sort of, yeah. you know, as solace, as, you know, like, oh, here are some nice people, like on the Mary Tyler Moore show, you know, these seem like really nice people that would like me and not care <laughs> about me being gay. So I thought, 
you know, what about an awards where, you know, I have gay friends that are journalists or, you know, critics, like let's, let's, you know, have an, an awards from our people, you know, yeah. um, and uh, our culture, which is pretty, you know, uh, we're, na we're named in homage to our Dorian awards or, uh, uh, you know, a wink to Oscar Wilde, the picture of Dorian Gray. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and so he's sort of our patron saint, if you will. Um, but yeah, so we've grown to this group of, you know, over 500. Uh, and what's so weird is that in those 15 years, it's even more uncomfortable for some people to be out yeah. uh, or dangerous. Um, so it's super important now to, you know, for me, I think it's it's maybe a subtle way of, of activism, but it's I've always said we're sort of the flip side of GLAD. They're about representation and we're about uh, the, that special eye on things uh, to remind people, even, you know, bigots and bullies and haters and stuff that, oh, well, I have to say that the that gay guy down the street did me turn on, did turn on, uh, did turn me on yeah. to uh, that weird show that I like, you know? Yeah. So it's a little a little uh, uh, dent in the in the armor. Yeah, but even glad, like you were mentioning, um, um, they amplify and post and share a lot about your, the awards, but then so does mainstream media. I mean, you have Deadline, Hollywood Reporter, things like that, where they're really, you know, so you're really taking it outside of the LGBT media world and bringing it way out as well. Right, That that's taken some effort, but uh, yeah. yeah, the trades are very, are very you're, that's, you make a good point. The trades have been very kind in covering us. Uh, and then the trades, like the uh, the Hollywood Reporter, the Rap Deadline, etc., uh, they have relationships with Yahoo or mm -hmm. AOL or you know others as uh, syndicates, sy syndicates or whatever. And uh, so then we get coverage, nice you know nice coverage that way too. So yeah. it's good. I loved it too. In 2020, when I was actually, I was reading more on this uh, now on your Wikipedia page, but because uh, I had forgotten about the the Dory, the the TV toast and uh, uh, some of the the events that you had done, especially during the pandemic, where you were on Reverie TV, you had Corel out there as the host, and I watched some of that, and uh, I thought it was amazing what you guys were working on. Yeah, thank you so much. You know, we did three specials and uh, yeah. two on Reverie and one on Here TV that you can see on Tubi. Uh, yeah. You can see them all if you do some digging uh, for free. Um, and uh, those were super fun. We, we produced those in-house. And, uh, and you know, uh, with Carell and his uh, editor, uh, this uh, Brandy, uh, Brandy, Brandon Riley Miller, I think that's his name, um, and I and a celebrity booker, we just had fun. And I, I think what we came up with was our our version of an awards uh, has always been from the get go when we do an in person events uh, or those TV specials. It's not just you know a, uh, you know a trophy toss with acceptance speeches. We don't want acceptance speeches. We it's uh, an interview in front of the crowd or you know in a special uh, in, in front of like a, a sort of a Oprah style interview yeah. that is a little probing. And then there is the presentation of the award with a little anticipation in the specials, like who, you know, here are the nominees, you know, who will win. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, those were super fun. And since then uh, we thought that that might translate into, you know, a, a larger network um, or, you know, streamer. Um, and there's still a chance there, you know, there always will be a chance, but, but, uh, but we, yeah, we have to, uh, th this era, you know, from corporate sponsors to, uh, perhaps network executives or streaming executives, eh, you know, it might be, it's a little harder for, to get a yes, you know, given, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis and, and I mean, you know, they're just not letting go. I mean, the, like what's happening in in certain southern states in Ohio, especially, it's just, yeah, know. you know, it's really awful. That's no, going to be a while. I think that whole uh, um, it's not always 
that widely talked about, but I believe it, it, I can state that a lot of the larger corporate brands and so forth that typically were were uh, loved with the representation of the LGBT community, I think they're quietly pulling back after everything they saw about you know Target and Bud Light and the whole list of things with DeSantis at the forefront of that. So I think that's going to affect us for a while, unfortunately. And I, I, it's only anecdotal. I've just been, I have to read up on this, but, uh, you know, we had pretty good representation, uh, according to GLAD, just last, as of last year, uh, you know, all our segments, the, you know, yeah. the, the, all the segments in the rainbow were on the uptick in representation in movies and TV. Uh, but a lot of shows have been canceled, yeah. um, yeah. with queer characters and, uh, so it's ebb and flow always, you know, yeah. who knows what that's about, you know, um, you know, there have been a lot of changes in at the top and at, at certain companies and a lot of, uh, you know, money issues They're They're realizing that they've been spending too much. So, you know, yeah. what's the first to go? <laughs> well, you, you nailed it though, this year when, um, everyone's favorite that I saw when one film of the year and got, uh, award, uh, the Dorian, uh, award on that was the, all of us strangers. Yeah, what a beautiful movie. Uh, I haven't cried over a movie, um, you know, at the end, the ending just, you know, it, it yeah. all the, all, all the way to it, uh, through it, I was like, huh, yeah, huh, huh, hmm? huh. <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, just, it, I, I wasn't sure what was going on early on. And then it just came together like this beautiful dreamy puzzle. Yeah. And by the end of it, I'm like, oh my God, this is a spiritual movie. I mean, I could just cry thinking about it now that the uh, the impact on my heart and other people around me, I could see people, you know, sobbing or, uh, you know, at least wiping their tears. Yeah. And I haven't felt that since like, you know, Brokeback Mountain definitely put a lump in my throat. You know, Heath Ledger with, you know, opening up the closet and there's Jake Gyllenhaal's, you know, shirt. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Uh, and Splendor in the Grass, uh, the ending of, I don't know if you've ever seen the Natalie yeah, Wood, yeah, uh, yeah. Warren Beatty film. It's a, that wow. is a, also a tear in, you know, not Yanker, but it's just yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, a, it's uh, I'm so, uh, you know, a lot of people didn't, it just skipped, missed the radar of uh, uh, the awards, you know, groups. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, the the Globes, the Oscars, the I think even the Indie, Indie Spirit Awards. I mean, I know that it got some nominations at the BAFTAs and some nominations here and there, but really, uh, I don't know what happened there. It's 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 not for lack of effort uh, on the part of uh, is I think it's Searchlight. You know, yeah, they yeah. made sure people saw it. You know, but yeah. or tried. You know, now it's on Hulu. Yeah, everybody can see it on Hulu. And, I know. I, I wasn't expecting that. I do it on Hulu. I was like, wait, we just paid to see this in the theater, which I'm glad we did. But uh, I didn't realize, but my husband loves this movie as well. So he said, that's fine. We're going to watch it again. What, what did you think of it? Oh, I, I I really enjoyed it. As I was watching it, I was feeling like I was trying to figure it out the same way I was when I was watching The Sixth Sense. I thought that he was going to turn around and just say, I see dead people or, you know, something. I thought it was going that direction. I did not really. So when when it ended, I wasn't really expecting it to be, much, like you said, more of a spiritual movie and something that was much more artistic than um, than science fiction. Right. You know, I have to see it again, too, because I think it has... I, I, I would never say Easter eggs for that kind of movie, but there might have been some things I missed. You know, there were some, I wouldn't, I don't know if it's continuity. There were some parts where I'm like, that's kind of fuzzy. I'm not yeah, sure yeah. I'm grabbing, you know, what is supposed to be happening because of the direction or writing or the editing. And then, but I think that it's not necessarily, I think that's the point. Yeah. You know, it's it's based on a uh, a very dreamy, Japanese, yeah, Japanese. Bella, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, he, uh, Andrew uh, Haig uh, wrote, uh, you know, switched around the story quite a bit, obviously, but, um, mm. but yeah, I think, uh, I think that's just part of the dreaminess. It's like mm. wanting to put you in a world where you're not, you know, this could be that, this could be that, yeah. you know. But did a good and, job uh, with that. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. No, this is uh, you know, as we're wrapping up, anything anything exciting on the horizon here for twenty twenty four? 
Well, uh, we have some things cooking at, at, uh, with Gallica. We've got our, uh, or I should say the Society of LGBTQ Entertainment Critics and our Dorian Awards. We've got our uh, Broadway uh, and Off-Broadway. We don't, it's not just Broadway, our, our Theater Awards. Dorian Theater Awards uh, are coming. Uh, we don't have the timeline set just yet, but that'll be in June as a walk up to the Tonys. And we've got our TV uh, awards, which are sort of, you know, pre Emmys, and that that's also in June. So June's a big month for us. That's, you know, yeah. Pride Month. Um, and uh, and yeah, we've got uh, speaking of social media, we have a new uh, social media uh, person, Giselle uh, Palomera, who is uh you know, one of these kids that's like, I just love this organization. I'm going to go, you know, I want to go gangbusters. <laughs> and so our social media presence will, will rise even more. Wow. And um, yeah. So, wow. and we got what we have, and I, something might be announced soon that uh, will intrigue people. Yeah. About the, the, the future of our group. Yeah. Well, like I said, I love hearing all that. So, uh, but mostly I'm just really glad that you were able to take a few moments of your time and share a bit of your story and what's going on with Gallica and, and uh, with our audience. And next time I'm in LA, I look forward to actually connecting in the real world with you too. We're right back at you, Matt. <laughs> and everybody uh, see the films that are, were nominated for our, our Dorian film awards and uh, they're highly recommended by our members and, and especially the ones that uh, won, but all of the nominees are, are, you know, May, De May, December, uh, uh, poor things. Uh, uh, people loved uh, Megan, of course. If you, everybody has probably seen that, but that won our yeah. campy flick of the year. Anyway, okay. that's about it. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks so much for being here and uh, look forward to chatting with you soon. Thanks so much, Matt. I really appreciate it. it feels good, so good.